Welcome everyone. Hopefully you're having a nice day wherever you are. Let me go ahead and get back to me here. I want to say welcome to our audience out there and uh, we have notifications going out. Hopefully this is a very well, uh, let's say a well taken type of program that you're going to understand today about magnesium deficiency. We've done other programs about magnesium, but what makes this program very special is that uh, we're going to be talking about deficiency, common symptoms that you may notice that you may be going to the doctor trying to figure out why you're symptomatic. I want to say hello to the people in the chat room. But uh, this program is something that's going to be very helpful for you. Uh, why? Because there's a lot of symptoms that you are having right now that may be coming from magnesium deficiency. And you're saying, well, I take magnesium. Well, if you're taking certain kinds of medications, you could be depleting magnesium. If you're under stress, you could be depleting magnesium. If you're eating the right foods, you may not be getting as much magnesium as you think you are because of the soil that could be deficient. So let's move on. And I really think that uh, this is going to be very helpful. One of my favorite subjects, I put a lot of time in this, but realize that magnesium is probably the most important mineral needed for the body. And the reason is because there's 350 biochemical reactions, 350 biochemical reactions that take place within the body. And if magnesium is not there, it affects other reactions, other chemical reactions. It can affect many systems of your body. So let's move on here. The first thing about people out there craving chocolate. How many people out there crave chocolate? I think many of you do. I do at times too. I know I've been deficient in, in uh, uh, magnesium for several reasons at certain times. But if you find yourself uh, craving this chocolate, um, you need to understand you may be low in magnesium. In general, I can tell you that uh, dark chocolate is very healthy for you. People stay away from chocolate. They say, well, it's not good for you. It's going to put fat on you. But the cacao got lots of magnesium. That chocolate uh, is, it has nutrients. Obviously, if you start adding lots of sugars, I don't recommend it. So usually the higher percentage uh, of cacao uh, is, or cocoa, obviously we like to say cacao. Uh, by the way, what is cacao? What is cocoa? Cocoa is roasted cacao. Cacao is the best element because it hasn't been damaged uh, when it comes down to the heat. So if you are craving for uh, dark chocolate, uh, that may be one reason why you may be magnesium deficient. The other one is digestive problems. Uh, how many people out there, including myself, uh, might have noticed that uh, our intestines, we become constipated at times. Now, people never talk about magnesium, but the studies show that magnesium helps reduce the constriction of, or contraction of the intestine, and in turn, it makes it easier for the body to pass waste. So if you are constipated a lot, I can tell you that this can be one reason why, because you may be deficient in magnesium. You may be saying, well, I'm taking my fiber, I'm drinking my water, and I'm still constipated. Well, you could be deficient in magnesium. If you just tuned in with us, they'll let you know that there are certain many, many new uh, 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 medications in the big pharma that shows, particularly blood pressure meds, as well as other meds, diuretics, that you may be excreting and losing magnesium because of the other meds. So that's why we need to sometimes supplement a little bit more. So if you notice that you are having this difficulty of your bowels uh, working correctly, I recommend that possibly increasing magnesium, which I'll show you at the end, a lot of great foods that will help you and understand naturally. If you don't want to take and supplement pills, it's okay, but I'll go over some very important foods that will help you. So uh, that is one, that is a big thing, digestive problems. The next thing I'm going to recommend about those people who are having any kind of uh, high blood pressure, now, if you're having low blood pressure, please be careful with magnesium. It can make it drop because as the magnesium uh, vasodilates the intestines, guess what? It vasodilates the blood vessels. So by vasodilating the blood vessels, we're having less resistance and we're having, obviously, the, the, the vessels are relaxing, allowing the, the blood pressure, allowing the heart not to pump so hard. So therefore, lowering the blood pressure, making the body a lot easier. Uh, I'll tell you, there is and there are great, great resources and great books and great studies showing how magnesium lowers blood pressure. So if even if you're on blood pressure medication, 
I, it pays to increase magnesium because maybe you can take half the amount or a quarter of the amount. Maybe you can get off. I know I have patients over the years, many of them got off their meds just taking magnesium because they've been deficient. So having high blood pressure just doesn't relate to improper kidneys. It just doesn't relate to genetics or even high sodium content, but low magnesium, a shorter magnesium will cause blood pressure to rise. The next one, and, I'm, and I can tell you this, uh, I, I can tell you from uh, myself and I can tell you from patients and I can tell you from studies that if you have been diagnosed with any kind of, uh, we say, safe arrhythmias, because if you are having arrhythmias, you see are feeling a lot of fluttering, um, it is a good idea to see your cardiologist, get it checked out, but most arrhythmias are benign. A lot of the cardiologists do not recommend magnesium. It's so important. Out of any mineral, I'm going to tell you that magnesium probably is the most important thing for irregular heartbeats. Uh, and when we become deficient, it may not always show, uh, obviously, in blood work, uh, because many of the blood works that people, that doctors do, don't even show magnesium. And obviously, what goes on in the blood and what goes on within the tissues are two separate things and two separate entities. But if you are having or experiencing arrhythmia, um, and they are benign because most arrhythmias are benign and you feel a lot of fluttering. A lot of it can be caused by stress, but I will tell you that this may be a deficiency that why you're feeling this, this arrhythmia, you may be sent thinking right now, wow, that magnesium may really save my life. I love to see people treat your body healthy because once you start getting on those arrhythmic medications, they are quite dangerous and it's quite hard sometimes to manage. Uh, the next one here is the old cramping pain. Uh, now, a lot of you may be runners, a lot of you may be athletes. The first thing you may be saying is, you know, uh, maybe I'm dehydrated. Maybe I need more electrolytes. Maybe I'm not having, uh, maybe whatever I'm eating is not right. Maybe I'm not getting enough sleep. Maybe I'm under stress. Maybe I'm not stretching the muscles. Magnesium deficiency. Very, very common. Uh, we know that magnesium works hand in hand with calcium. And the correct ratio is generally two to one, calcium to magnesium. Uh, it's very important because uh, in order for calcium to work, you must have magnesium. So we realize that the magnesium does help the muscle fibers to relax. It does relieve tension. It prevents damage, allows the body to repair uh, quicker. And it will get rid of lots of these chronic, particularly these people who get chronic cramps. The cramp may not be in your leg. It could be in your thigh. It could be in your foot. It could be in your arm. Uh, you may also notice uh, fasciculation. Sometimes the muscles would kind of jump, 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 jump. Uh, very common, magnesium. So those are symptoms. Those are deficiencies. And it's the first thing I want you to think, because if you're having these symptoms, I want you to remember this program. Hopefully this will help you. The next big one is anxiety. Now, a lot of you, uh, we've all been un under anxiety at different parts of our life. But if you're suffering a great amount of anxiety, instead of going anti-anxiety drugs, uh, magnesium deficiency goes hand in hand. Studies show it over and over. No one thinks of magnesium deficiency when you're in a, under anxiety. You know, it's like, I'm antsy, I'm, I'm itchy, I just, I, just, I just can't function. Well, re magnesium has a tremendous relaxation effect. Try taking magnesium before you go to bed. You'll sleep like a baby. So this is a great one when it comes to stress and when it comes to irritability is that uh, the good old anxiety. As you talked about sleeping, uh, same thing, uh, the old sleeping thing. Uh, it will it will do the same thing. So uh, if you're having a hard time uh, sleeping, I would recommend the old magnesium. Uh, we have headaches and migraines. Um, wow, this is a big one. It relaxes blood vessels. It relaxes tension around the neck. Uh, it helps relieve tension. It encourages uh, areas within the nervous system to totally relax. I mean, not only for, for the plain headache, but even for migraines. So it can prevent auras. You know, when we get that, that dizziness, we're that vomiting. Uh, it's been proven for cluster headaches. So this is something that if you're getting continued headaches and you are on types of pain medications, uh, it's something to consider. I've had hundreds of patients reduce pain, reduce headaches just by increasing magnesium. Now, I don't want to make it sound like magnesium is a magic pill for everyone, but I want you to be aware that if you're having these symptoms, you have to possibly consider a deficiency of magnesium. So uh, when we look at uh, the next one here is heartburn. Now, this is a big one. Now, 
This is like the multi-billion dollar business of, uh, I'm not going to mention the drugs because I don't want to do it on YouTube, but there are so many different kinds of drugs. You have the, uh, the, the complete proton pump inhibitors. You have the, uh, the, the pro, you have different inhibitors, but I don't want to go in the names of the drugs because I don't want my name to get out with these drugs. But I can tell you that magnesium is alkaline, calcium is alkaline. Now, a lot of the, the Tums and stuff like that, which, you know, is great for people. That's the calcium carbonate that just coats it. But uh, by increasing magnesium, it has an effect with acidity. Uh, the list uh, shows a lot of things, and it doesn't necessarily mean that uh, you're eating spicy foods or low acidic uh, foods, but certain people just have increased acid. Re remember, minerals can be alkaline, very basic, and it can be very acid. So uh, certain drugs will cause deficiency of magnesium, causing acidity in the body, and one of the symptoms can be this gastric area or this, or this heartburn. All right, very important. Now let's go into a couple of things here. Uh, you're asking me, you know, what about the best sources of magnesium? Nuts are probably one of the best things. Uh, they're great. Now you may be even craving nuts. It's great. My own saturated fatty acids. Uh, people say, well, the, the fat's bad for you. No, the fat's good for you. When you start staying away from the fat, that's when you have problems. I mean, you, you need fat in your body to be healthy. So don't start thinking that if you're eating fat, you're going to be unhealthy, you're going to lose weight or gain weight. Forget about that. You need it. You'll be healthy. You'll have a stronger immune system. And again, this has vitamin E and it has a lot of the different B vitamins as well. So don't ever, you know, just say uh, nuts are bad for you. Now, if you're going to say which nuts are the worst for you, I'm going to tell you the two nuts. The worst nut is the peanut uh, in general because of the mold that's grown in the ground. And uh, the cashews are not the greatest nut. The best nuts are the almond, which is the most alkaline. And my second best nut is the walnut. All right. So just thought I would share that with you. Uh, fish, very, very good. Um, excellent when it comes down to uh, magnesium. Uh, if Particularly halibut is one of them. One of the greatest source of magnesium, like fish, like nuts, also tends uh, to, to have this right type of fatty acids. Now, the fatty acids help promote brain health. It does other good things. Uh, realize that this fatty acids lowers cholesterol, so it reduces the risk of high blood pressure. But I do recommend that if you're eating fish, please grill it, uh, bake it, get away from that fried crap because that fried crap causes hydro hydrolyzed, hydrogenized fats and it causes all kinds of uh, poisons and toxins and cancer things that can uh, give you lots of problems. Uh, you know, so I don't want to tell you how to cook your food, but don't fry it. Let me just say it that nicely. I think that would be helpful for you. Uh, cocoa is another great thing. We talked about chocolate, the cacao. We talked about cocoa. Cocoa is the baked, or, or I'm sorry, the, the, the roasted cacao. Uh, but again, chocolate uh, has magnesium in it. And um, the old um, cocoa, you know, the, the high amount of cocoa content in there uh, is good, but you have to be careful with those high sugars. Uh, but it does show that there is quite a bit of magnesium in there that people don't realize. They say, well, it's sugar. I don't want to get fat. It's, it's whatever it may be. I don't want to get fat. Uh, not true. Rice bran, excellent. Uh, lots of great mineral, minerals, vitamins, lots of great grains in here. Uh, it's low in sodium, helps the heart health. It does help cholesterol come down because it does absorb uh, the bran. Is, is really nice, a, a soluble fiber type of thing. Uh, it's great. And it does have significant levels of magnesium. Now, I always say the, the, the true grains are healthy with magnesium. The refined white rice is no good. There, there's like nothing in there and you're just kind of putting empty calories in you and you're converting those empty calories eventually that goes right into fats. One of my favorite here, quinoa, one, probably one of the greatest grain on earth. If you haven't eaten quinoa, um, Think of me. Um, I can tell you that quinoa is one of my favorites, one of the most healthiest. It's even got protein in there. It's got iron, magnesium, fiber, and zinc. It's got good sources of magnesium. Probably my favorite superfood out of any of the grains. Uh, you can. There, there's so many ways of preparing it. If you've never eaten quinoa, check it out. Look it up on Google. I'm telling you, you'll thank me later. It's the, probably the best grain, probably the most tastiest. The texture is beautiful, and it's actually one of my favorite. Uh, pumpkin seeds. One of my favorite too. Great for guys out there that got prostate problems, uh, maybe benign pro prostatic hypertrophy. People, uh, if you have to urinate a lot, males, uh, this is great. A lot of great magnesium. Um, 
a great thing because, you know, realize if magnesium is causing vasodilation in the blood vessels, causing vasodilation in the intestines, it's going to vasodilate practically the whole body. So it's, a, it's actually a good thing. And, and this is a great, great thing with magnesium. Uh, you can add your pumpkin seeds to uh, whatever you want to cook with it. There's all different ways of cooking with pumpkin seeds. You guys, um, uh, ladies and gentlemen, probably know how to cook better than I do. And it's a great snack. So I wanted to share that with you. Uh, winding down here, we got the old spinach. Uh, I love spinach. Remember, the greener, the, gr the better. Uh, lots of great minerals, lots of great magnesium, potassium, calcium, zinc, lots of nutrients in there. Uh, very important, digestive. Anything green is healthy. Uh, stay with the greens. will really, really help you tremendously. Uh, the three fruits here, the avocado. Uh, we look at the, uh, the avocado and the bananas and most of your dried fruits of your, uh, your figs extremely, extremely good with magnesium. The dried fruits are extremely good. Uh, and your, and lastly here, I want to share out your black beans here. Uh, black beans may make you toot, but they are good for you. Uh, they are what we call the heart health. It helps you, uh, people think that, you know, it's fattening, it makes you bloaty. Uh-uh. Uh, it, there's so many nice, good things in beans. Uh, it's a lot of protein, low levels of fat. It's a, a great fiber, uh, great magnesium. Um, this is really, really good stuff. And again, a lot of the beans, a, a, a great source. So don't don't restrict yourself because of what you heard. Uh, so uh, a couple things I just want to bring out to you. Um, I'm going to uh, come back to, uh, well, let me go ahead and just say a couple of things as I um, get this thing set up. Uh, I'd like you to subscribe to my channel. Uh, lots of great videos out there, self-help videos. Uh, pertaining to the magnesium, uh, what's the best magnesium out there? Let me just briefly say a couple things. I have some research out here. Uh, generally, magnesium, approximately 400 milligrams a day is good. I like to break it up, maybe morning towards the evening, like half and half. There are different types of magnesium. Some people love the magnesium malates. Uh, that's a good choice for people suffering with fatigue. Uh, it is very healthy for you. It plays a big role in ATP. They have the magnesium taurates. Uh, it's a supplement great for cardiovascular disease and actually helps prevent arrhythmias. You have the ma magnesium glycinates. Uh, this is one of the most bioavailable and most absorbable form of calcium. I'm, I'm sorry, of magnesium. Uh, so uh, the glycinates are very good. And you have the carbonates. I'm not really big with those. And you have the chlorides. But a lot of them have the different eights or the ides together, a different mixture of the chelated. Uh, but the worst forms of magnesium are the magnesium sulfates, which is like your Epsom salt. You're not going to be taking that. Your magnesium glutamate, uh, because or, or actually aspartate. Uh, but these can be dangerous, uh, like we say aspartame, and those can be dangerous when taken more of a neurotoxic. So uh, in general, you have your taurates, your malates, your citrates, your glycinates. Those are really the most common. But the best thing I can tell you to do is check your, uh, go to Google uh, or Amazon and, and, and type in the best ones and you can see, read the reviews and I'm sure you'll get a lot of great results from that. I really hope that this, uh, this video was uh, semi-educational for you. I found it educational for myself. I like to go back and review these things because, you know, when, when we are deficient in these kind of things, we don't realize these symptoms correlate to specific minerals many of the times. And I always say it's better to use a fly swatter and try to... Try to get the fly instead of taking a, a sledgehammer and trying to break everything. So we don't want to really jump on the bandwagon and start breaking our body with these heavy drugs and these medications if we sometimes can do something very smart. Uh, and again, in the chat room, I'm sure you got a lot of people out there who can tell you the, the mags that they've been taking, the mags that's been helpful. And I love doing these live feeds because a lot of the pe people out there in the chat rooms get to learn from other people. And that's why it's so effective. So anyways, I wanted to uh, say, uh, Starman, Starman, we appreciate you being here, but I want to say thank you to our chat listeners. And again, check out our videos, share these videos. You don't have to ask me. And again, on Facebook, on Facebook, uh, Motivational Doc on Facebook, best way to get a hold of me. I know I get lots of emails otherwise, but fill up that page. Go ahead and put likes on there. Ask your questions there, and hopefully we'll keep building up and trying to keep our group together so we can continue to stay educated because that's what it's all about. You know, without education, we're, we're really empty. Anyways, I wish everyone, uh, particularly here in the U.S., a great night, a great evening. Those people overseas, a great morning, a great afternoon. I would say God bless to you and your family, and we'll catch up with you real soon. Bye-bye now.